How can I forget that day? It was April the 2nd, 2011. I was called as a mission developer to St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Brooklyn. And so uh, that's, that's where I was called. And then after that, I did an interim ministry at Grace Lutheran Church and School in Malvern. So those are the two locations that I've been in. My status officially is retired, but I was reminded twice, one by a layperson, one by a pastor, that once I'm called and ordained, I'm never retired. God has called me to the world to be able to do whatever it is that I can do to be able to spread the gospel. Well, of course, my ordination. It was very special to have friends show up, to have my family there, to have the different congregations that I've served in to come, for my friends, for my acquaintances, for people to come. That was really special to me. There have been others. Recently, I've been doing supply. And when members of the congregation come up to me and they say, when are you coming back? Or can you be my pastor if they don't have a pastor? And then the most recent one that occurred was this past Sunday. I met a, was doing supply at a church, a congregation, and I've been working with um, one family in particular, Charlotte and Ian. And I've been getting them used to serving in the church. They're used to just sitting in the pews and not doing very much. So I've started to include them and to be able to assist them in learning how to be acolytes. So they had the albs on, they had the big cross, they wanted that. And so they've been doing things, being crucified, being torched, and they really like it. And this past Sunday, Charlotte came and stood beside me. And so she greeted the people as they were leaving. Now, I didn't ask her to do that. She did it on her own. So I don't know if I have the gift of prophecy, but I would think that possibly somewhere down the line, she may be in ministry in some way. Yeah, so you inspire her, your work inspire her. Well, yes, and I think that that's what we need to do. I think that they need to have, see more women out here in ministry because most of the congregations I go to have never had a woman in the pulpit especially a black woman in the pulpit. So I do believe that that is part of my ministry, a very important part of my ministry. Well, you know, when we go to seminary, we know that it's not going to be easy. We expect that there will be challenges. But as a black woman, it seems to be extremely difficult. I was invited to attend quite a few years ago, a Women of Color conference where in Chicago, where a lot of women, black women, women of color, were invited to be able to have a conversation. And it was so amazing in that, in this present time, that women are feeling alienated from the church. They don't have calls at all. They're never given calls. Many of them have student loans and things, and they're out there in the church. Doesn't seem to respond to that to be able to help and assist with reference to correcting that. And I also believe that women are excluded from even applying or um, being engaged in congregations with reference to uh, possibly being called to that congregation. And to take it a step further, I asked someone once, what do you think, do you think that your congregation would call a woman, especially a woman of color? And the person thought about it for a while and very honestly said, no. So this is what we have faced as women in the church. So this is what we have to continue to try to overcome. We know that the battle will not be easy, but we know that we must continue to do this because there is a legacy whose shoulder we stand on. We have the biblical women to, to know exactly what they did and how they fought. We have our modern day women who have paved the way for us to make us even get this far. Well, first I would like to thank those who have supported women in ministry. I think that's important to realize that we have not done this alone and that they will continue to be with us. My prayer is that those who have not joined in the fight to, um, for justice for all of the, not only the women of color, but for all women, that they will join the fight so that we can come together as sisters and brothers to continue fighting the beautiful fight of faith, 
which is what we've been called to do. Now this does not mean that it's just ordained clergy. I think our lay people in our congregations are very important to join this fight as well. They have to be open to even considering um, a woman of color or a woman of any nationality, of different colors. So it is very important that as a Senate, we become the forefront of fighting, of making certain that there is equality for everyone within the Metro New York Senate. And for the next generation of women, uh, the younger women who are feeling this call, that they are feeling that God is calling them, but they are not so sure about the decision, uh, what will be your uh, and a special advice for them? My advice is to, as I mentioned before, keep on fighting the beautiful fight of faith and know that you're not alone. We as women, all women, whether we are womanist theologians or feminist theologians, we are beginning to organize in a way that will be meaningful to be able to help all women in ordained ministry. We realize that sometimes the, the support that is needed is not there. So we're beginning to make changes to make certain that that happens so that everyone will be able to know that they're not alone and that we will continue to walk that journey with them, the journey to which they've been called, the journey which God has called them to do.